Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Monday module on the Reproductive Health Program. Uh, today, to present, we have Dolly England and Malika Eden Hill, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves uh, and turn it over to them. Thanks, Jessica. What a warm welcome. Hello, Internet land. My name is Dolly England. I am the Reproductive Health Access Coordinator. And my name is Malika Eden Hill. I'm the Health Education Coordinator for the Reproductive Health Program. So in the next hour, we hope to give you an overview of the Reproductive Health Program and some of the new programs that we are um, trying to get the word out about. So here we go. All right. So most of you already know about the Reproductive Health Equity Act, also called REA. And this legislation was groundbreaking and is a reflection of Oregon's commitment to working towards achieving equity and access to reproductive health care. REA passed in the summer of 2017, right around the same time as Senate Bill 558 passed. And together, they significantly expand coverage for immigrant communities. REA received a lot of national media attention, particularly because of its focus on abortion coverage. But REA is bigger than abortion coverage, and many people think that it is one of the most progressive pieces of reproductive health legislation in the country. As I mentioned, REA is big. It contains many provisions which take together, or excuse me, which when taken together ensure that all Oregonians, regardless of their citizenship or immigration status, gender identity, insurance coverage, race, and sex have access to important reproductive health services without any cost. But the key parts of the legislation that are relevant to us and the work we do is described on this slide. We'll be going into a lot more detail throughout this webinar, but first, the first thing that REA does is it expands Cowan Plus to include 60 days postpartum coverage. It also um, provides coverage for a full range of reproductive health services for individuals who can become pregnant and would otherwise be eligible for medical assistance if not for their, their immigration status. Thank you. So what is the Reproductive Health Program's role? You're gonna hear us refer to ourselves as the RH program, and that is short for Reproductive Health Program. So one of the most important things to know is that REA and the RH program are different things. REA was legislation that passed an expanded coverage for specific individuals. Some of the services covered under REA are administered by the Reproductive Health Program. Some of the services are administered through CALUM and CALUM Plus. The RH program covers specific services for all individuals. So this graphic may help some people understand the relationship between REA and the RH program. Can you, you can see here that there is a lot of overlap between the people and the services. So, um, Funding that we administer is three different funding streams to provide a broad range of high quality reproductive health services across the state. And we also have a certified network of providers. So in order to participate, clinics must apply for the reproductive health certification. Um, they have to meet very high quality standards. Um, and the national standards of care are comprehensive, are a comprehensive set of requirements. So as far as who's eligible for the Reproductive Health Program, REA is one funding source that the RH program has to provide coverage for services. So using all of its funding, the RH program covers all low-income individuals of reproductive capacity, regardless of their citizenship or immigration status, gender, and sex. So you can definitely refer all types of individuals to the Reproductive Health Program, not, this, not just those who meet the REA eligibility qualifications. So what types of services are available? Here are some examples of services that are available at reproductive health program clinics. All of our RH program clinics must offer these services. There may be some slight differences in what a clinic offers. For example, there are a few clinics that don't provide IUDs or implants. Um, however, most do. So it's most important to know that all of the birth control methods are available at the clinic site so the client doesn't have to go to a pharmacy 
to pick up additional birth control. How do you refer to an RH clinic? Well, this is what the Reproductive Health Program web page looks like. Specifically, this is the page you would go to if you wanted to find and refer someone to a clinic. This, is, this page is great because it lists clinics in every county of the state, and the basic information is there. And we're working on more detailed resources uh, that may be helpful to you, but for the most part, I refer people to this website. And as an assister, it's gonna be easy for you to say, what's your zip code? And enter in that client's zip code, and it'll tell you all of the reproductive health clinics within that area. Um, the other thing to note is that we have over 150 providers across the state, so there's sure to be a clinic in your area. Um, we also, I just wanted to give you some examples of the types of agencies. So we have county health department clinics. We also have federally qualified health centers or FQHCs. Planned Parenthoods are going to be listed in here. We also have school-based health centers and community health centers. So there's lots of different types of clinics that you could go to. So this is, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Reproductive Health Program's enrollment form. So we do have a separate application and our hope is to make it as easy as possible for clients. So the RH specific enrollment form um, basically collects a lot of the same information that OHP applications collect, but it's a lot shorter. And I really wanna say that because we're really proud of how much shorter our application is. Um, the enrollment form is available in six languages. And unlike the OHP application, clients currently complete the Reproductive Health Program enrollment form at the clinic site on the same day of service. I say currently because one of the things we'd like to explore is what it might look like to have additional help or have a client come to the clinic with a completed application. More to come on that. All the information on the Reproductive Health Program enrollment form is self-declared. That means that clients don't have to provide any documentation. The exception to this is if they are a US citizen or have an eligible immigration status, in which case they'd need to bring a photo ID to their appointment. And like the OHP application, we will use the information on the Reproductive Health Program enrollment form to decide which source of money to use to pay for the individual services. So those are some differences in our enrollment form, um, but the application, what you need to know, takes place in the clinic on the same day of service. Any questions about that before we kind of transition into thinking a little bit about reproductive health and ways to um, have conversations with folks? If anyone has any questions, please feel free to put it into the question box now. And also, yes, this PowerPoint will be available to you all. <laughs> cool. All right, well, I'll get started, and if questions come up, we can answer them. So, um, again, my name is Malika Edenhill, and I'm the um, Health Education Coordinator. Um, and we thought it might be helpful just to spend a little bit of time talking about reproductive health and a little bit um, about sexuality in general, um, just because this may be um, new bodies of work that folks are doing or new conversations that people are having. And so when we think about reproductive health, we want to just be really clear that we're talking um, beyond just like how to take care of our bodies, right? I mean, it really is about people having um, access to information, but it's also, and knowing how to take care of themselves, it's also the values, right? So the values that we grew up with, the values that we have, um, the partnerships that we're in, the ways that we um, are in community with one another. So it's it's really big. Um, and pregnancy is a really major piece of reproductive health, right? So people, um, how people decide if and when they want to create a pregnancy. And so being able to have um, 
accurate information about how to create a wanted pregnancy, how to prevent, and also if people find themselves in a position of needing an abortion, how to access those resources. Um, reproductive health is about sexually transmitted infections, so knowing what they are, how they feel, how we can manage them. Um, it's having resources to birth control, both um, short-term and long-term birth control, right? So permanent birth control. Um, and like we said, it's learning about how to take care of our bodies. So, um, so reproductive health is, is really big. And if we go to the next slide, um, you can see that, you know, one of the things that I use as a health educator um, is a model called circles of sexuality, which really helps me think about the different components of sexuality and sexual health. Um, there's a number of different circles. This one is from Advocates for Youth, um, but you might see different ones. And one of the things that I really like about this is that um, it really helps us understand that reproductive health is more than just knowing how to take care of our bodies, right? That, you know, sexuality and reproductive health is about um, how we identify in terms of our gender. It's about sexual orientation. Um, it's also um, about taking risks, right? And being intimate with partners. It's about being able to ask for what we need. And so you'll see there's these different circles um, there are some uh, models that I've seen where in the middle people put values so that we can think like our values are in the middle of all of these connecting circles. Um, but I think it's helpful for folks to know like when we're coming, when we're talking about reproductive health, although most of what we talk about is access to clinics, we're thinking about all of those other components that come along with it. And so when you're engaging with people who might be interested in reproductive health, it's important for you to rem remember that their past sexual experiences are gonna impact their ability to ask questions, um, how their families talk to them about reproductive health is gonna impact their ability to ask questions, um, the images that we get from society about our bodies and what's okay mm -hmm. and what's not okay um, is going to impact it. So um, we thought this might also be helpful. Um, I don't think up here, but one of the other things that, you know, I like to just mention is that, you know, this is also about how, if any of us are parents, like how we talk to our kids about bodies and sexuality and sexual health. So it may come up in some of your conversations as well. Um, so just acknowledging that sexuality is really interconnected to so many other parts of um, who we are and how we um, are in the world. Any questions about this model or this diagram? No? Okay. So one of the things that we wanted to do is just to provide some tips for talking about reproductive health services. And specifically, this came up for um, the SB 558 grantees mm -hmm. um, that you know, we're asking them to do some really specific outreach and engagement for RH um, services. And so after this, we're gonna lead into some scenarios um, to think about how we might um, approach a conversation. But one of the things that we thought was just helpful for you to hear from us is kind of some of our perspective and thoughts about talking about reproductive health services. And so one of the things that we often really say is that it's so helpful and so um, so needed to affirm folks when they ask about our aid services that, mm -hmm. you know, if they're asking you, they trust and value your opinion. And so it's so important that people get the care that they need, right? right. And so um, it can be really, it can feel like a big risk to ask about reproductive health mm -hmm. services um, if you haven't established that kind of relationship before. So just affirming, like, thank you so much for asking. I'm really glad that um, you want more information. Um, another thing that we really try and say is like it's really important that we don't shame people about their bodies and we don't shame them about reproductive health, especially if it's a question that makes you maybe feel a little uncomfortable or you weren't expecting to get that question. Mm -hmm. Or if it's about something that you have values about that are different from the person you're working with, right? Okay. So if someone is asking about birth control and you don't necessarily think that it's appropriate for a teenager to ask about birth control, right? Like it's really important that we are non-judgmental and um, just provide information. 
Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I often um, encourage people to do is just acknowledge what we do and we don't know. As a health educator, I would often get questions in classrooms or at community events, and I did not know the answer. And I feel really comfortable saying that is a great question and I do not have the answer for you, right? Um, the goal is not always to have the information and not, we don't have to be the expert. It's really about getting them to an expert, right? So getting them to a clinic um, is the next step. It's really important that we just get them to somebody who knows that information. And then I'm sure you already do this, but leaving the door open for them to reconnect with you if things come up or they go to a clinic that didn't quite match their needs. Um, for them to be able to kind of circle back. And I would just add, I used to be an enrollment assister. So I know the kind of Im important work you are doing in your community and that people are looking, looking at you as trusted resources. So if someone comes up to you and says, yo, do you know where I can get some condoms? Or like, I'm trying to get a NuvaRing, you now have the information and resources to help share that information with the other clients in your community. So um, just consider this another feather in your cap, more resources for your toolbox. And I know that you all have the ability to have these conversations. Yeah. Yeah. And this, um, these tips are not um, an assumption that you don't already know these things, just a, a sweet reminder, right? That I feel like as somebody in reproductive health, um, I think sometimes folks outside of our field get a little anxious and nervous about having these conversations. Um, and so continuing to normalize how important it is that every single one of us has some kind of reproductive health needs at some point in our lives. And so just acknowledging that, um, that you know, we, we're going to ask, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. All right. So we have a couple of scenarios that we thought would be fun. Um, and we're going to we're going to see how interactive we can make these. Our idea was that we would share this with you and get some ideas from you about how you might respond to this person and then share with you some ideas we had. So the first scenario is Elena is assisting a family that is interested in OHP for their kids. The parents don't have insurance. Today, Elena is working with the mom, and she wonders if they might be interested in RH services. So how might you suggest she start the conversation? So I don't know if this is an opportunity for people to kind of type in a response or if they can raise their hand and get unmuted, but does anybody have any ideas as to how Elena could bring up RH services to this mom? So I'll give people a second to, to put in answers cool. into the question box. This is where I wish we had the Jeopardy music, like on <laughs> do, 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 do. something cool. <laughs> I know there are people on the call who have answers for us. Anyone feeling brave? Are there any sisters that I know on the call that I could just call out? That'd be awesome. <laughs> can um, you see the attendee list? I think you should. I can't. I can't. I, it, I can see that there are fifty-seven people on, but it doesn't tell me who they are. Mm. So it's okay. Okay. So no one is volunteering for me and Malika. Deanna, I see you have your hand raised. Um, let me see if I can unmute you. Deanna? Yes, hello. Hi. Hello there. Um, so I would say that the easiest way we've been doing this so far is to just very naturally uh, grabbing a brochure and giving it to the parents to either one and say like, listen, there's some services that are available now people that uh, might not qualify for OHP and the uh, income limits are higher, we kind of open it and show them the little list of the income and that gets them interested in saying like, oh, okay, I could qualify for this. And then we tell them, you know, it's different services for reproductive health for both men and women. And this is something that you can take home. And if you're interested, just let us know. We can uh, show you or tell you about what clinic to contact and that's it. Excellent awesome. idea. That's great. 
Yeah. And we Should have we, some um, people who keyed in answers. Um, okay. Let's see from Carla. This could be offered as another set of services that are offered and leave it up to the client to decide if they want more information or if they do want those services. Um, Elizabeth says, ask what future plans for their family are. Um, ask for the age of the kids. Are they sexually active? And offer at the end of the appointment all of the resources available through the RH program. Awesome. Awesome. These are excellent recommendations. Fabulous. Great. So what did Dolly and I say? I think the next slide. Yeah. So I mean, kind of some of some of what was said, but you know, we gave a couple ideas of like, I'm so glad you're thinking about your kids' health. Have you thought about healthcare for you? Um, there are free services for women in Oregon. I can talk to you about it today if you're interested. Um, and so that would be a great moment to share mm -hmm. the brochure and, and pass the brochure over. Um, or also we just kind of framed it slightly differently. Um, did you know that you might be eligible for healthcare services? There are free women's health services available. Um, those services include a well woman exam that is about making sure you're healthy and giving you more, more information about things like birth control. Are you interested in learning more? We thought also kind of mentioning like specific services might be helpful, right? So well when it, women exams are things that a lot of women mm -hmm. need and that is an opportunity to get information about other things. But I love all of these ideas, asking about plans for the future, asking ages, these are really great. I think it's really interesting approach to to ask about their income so that they see they're eligible, but they don't necessarily know. Then you're like, yeah, you you're eligible, and here's what you're eligible for. That's a really interesting recommendation. I like it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It sounds like folks are already doing a lot of really good stuff having these conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we have some more scenarios for you, so let's just keep on keeping on. All right, so scenario two. So Angela is working with a new client who has a lot of questions about reproductive health. The client asks about services, where she can go, how much things cost, and how soon she can get an appointment. What should Angela do? So what are some ideas you have for this person, right? Um, this person has a lot of questions. I think maybe people just need a couple seconds to key in their answers. And if anyone wants to raise their hand, I can attempt to unmute you as well. Thanks for being smart at GoToWebinars, Jessica. I try. We'll see. We do have a question that's unrelated on here. Oh, no. Let's see. I'll save that. Um, so one idea is to give them a packet of information answering their questions. Like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the nature of the beast that we have the slight lag just because it takes some time okay. to get to the yeah. question box. And actually, I'm going to, there is a question unrelated that I will say while people are typing in their answers, which is Do patients need to be OHP eligible in order to access RH services? No. And in fact, if we were to go back several slides to the beginning, anyone who can get pregnant or get someone else pregnant is eligible for reproductive health services. And if they have OHP, this is important to know. If the client already has OHP, they can go to any clinic and access all of these same reproductive health services through their OHP benefit, and that's mm -hmm. including abortion. So these are already these are already services they have access to through their um, OHP plan. If someone, let's say, has OHP, no, let's say someone has private insurance, but they don't want their mom to know they're going to get birth control pills, that might be someone who applies through the RH program mm -hmm. and would still be eligible for our services and resources. Yeah. So I hope that answers the question. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. and youth who are on OHP also have access to reproductive mm -hmm. health services as well. All right, and now yeah. we did get a few other answers to your scenario, which is um, give information as factual and informational just as a reference for folks. Uh, don't be awkward. If you make it a part of your follow-up after an application, it will become more natural and you will be seen as resourceful. Uh, I'd recommend that the client go to the clinic or center where all these services are available. Uh, in our county, it's public health. I'll give them all the contact info and tell them about the simplified intake form and income. Awesome answer. This is so great. Thank you. Oh gosh, there's so many good ones. Uh, there's uh, That's a great question. Do you have a clinic in mind? Then offer to call the clinic with the client to help them link their services and answer their questions. Um, yeah, a lot of information about helping to connect people with that, those local resources. Perfect. And I just think it's important to note that this scenario is gonna happen. Like somebody's going to come up to you and have a bajillion questions about something you don't know the answer to, and it is 100% okay. I had people come to me all the time with questions about their prescriptions and diabetes and things, and I'm not a doctor. I don't know the answer to those things. So to your point, getting them to the clinic um, is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So let's go to some of our tips, um, the next slide, which I ready. Um, so I really like how many of you affirmed folks, right? So it's awesome. You know exactly what you want. You're asking really good questions. Again, these are just examples of things that we thought we would say, but affirming people, affirming that they're taking care of their health, that they know what they want is so, so important. Um, acknowledging you don't always have the answers. And that also could be connected to like the don't be awkward, right? Like <laughs> probably saying like great questions. I don't know all of the answers. Um, but, you know, we'll figure out how to get you them um, answered is, is so important. Connecting to a provider, which you already all said, right? You have a lot of specific questions. I want to connect you with someone that can answer them. I have a clinic directory. Let's see where the closest clinic to you is. Um, and then kind of that final thing, which, again, I feel like you all are doing, like, stay connected, leave the door open, right? I'm always here to help you figure out how to get the care you need. If you have more questions, please ask. So I feel like a lot of you um, went through these steps mm -hmm. um, already. Uh, so that's awesome. It's really great. And then we yeah. have one more that's maybe a little bit more challenging. So our final scenario is Mateo is working with a family to sign their kids up for OHP. After the, appoint after the appointment, their teenager asks Mateo privately if he can help them get birth control. They tell them they really don't want their parents to know and they're trying to be responsible. Can you help please? How might he respond? So what are some ideas um, for this is sister in responding to this teenager, this young person? Someone is asking how old the teenager is in this scenario. Great question. Mm, let's say they're 15. This is where the Jeopardy music is playing. <laughs> um, let's see. Someone says, I'd refer them to public health or their new GP. Uh, they can receive services no matter their age. All good. Mm -hmm. Congratulate them for wanting to be responsible and safe. Give the teenager the brochure and clinic information. Tell them they don't need their parents' consent to access the information or services. Perfect. Awesome. Great. So you don't you don't need us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can go to the next slide. And I think it's essentially saying a lot of the things that you all um, just said, right? So again, affirming, like, good for you for taking control of your health and seeking out resources, right? Um, and then providing them with information. Um, and so this is where we did some framing. So I'll read it to you and you guys can decide how you, what you think about it. But 
Um, you can call or text 211 or I can give you the information for the clinic closest to you. And I want you to know that you have the right to access services without your parents knowing. If you think they might be supportive, it might be good for you to talk with them, but you don't have to. I just wanted to remind you that they care about you and might be open to talking, right? And I think part of the reason that we added that is because we really want to affirm that young person's confidentiality and independence and acknowledge that they have the right to access services. And I think we know that there are a lot of parents who would be supportive if they knew that their young person was making good choices. So just creating space for that young person to decide um, if, if that's information they wanna share with the adults in their life. Um, and you would know that young person a little better if you'd been working with them, right? Like if that's an appropriate thing to say or not. But I think we um, at the RH program try and encourage and support adult and family engagement as much as possible and kind of just give people opportunities to have those conversations. And then the final piece, right, again, is clinic referrals. So working with them to find a good youth-friendly place to refer them. Um, a lot of you have um, SBHCs. Those are really great places to refer young people. What's an SBHC, Malika? <laughs> School-based health clinic. Thank, Thank you for you. asking. Um, so those are often really great places for people to um, get referred to. But um, yeah, those are some of our tips. And we have a question um, just as far as for um, what our, our partners are allowed to give minors or if there are any repercussions they might face from parents in a situation like this. I mean, it's legal for a young person to access reproductive health services without their parents knowing. So giving someone a brochure about RH services um, is not against the law, right? People can access those, um, although some parents might be upset about it, right? And so kind of knowing um, if things are left out in public spaces in their bedroom that people might find out and there's questions, but, um, you know, young people can pick up brochures pretty much anywhere. They can Google things, they, too. <laughs> they, I'm just saying. Yeah, so there's no legal ramifications, to my knowledge, of a, of a person giving a young person um, a brochure about the services that they can access. The other thing that I would recommend, too, is that if you know the clinic that's available in your community, you might go to that clinic and introduce yourself and let them know that you're doing some outreach on behalf of the RH program and ask them what brochures they have. Because almost all of our clinical partners have created their own brochures and materials that are very specific to their community. So our brochure may not be the right one for that youth. Maybe you need to go to the school-based health center and see what flyer they're using for their youth. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where we give a lot of flexibility to each community to create the tools that work best for them. And we also have a question just to clarify what the role of 211 is. Well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have some slides on this coming forward, but 211 is one of our um, partners. And so if you call 211, you will actually, um, they have two dedicated staff that just help with reproductive health questions and concerns. So they can, get you connected to not only reproductive health services, those clinics, but if someone was interested in an abortion, they have additional resources and information on that. Um, or if someone was like, I don't know what school-based health center is nearest me, they could help you figure out that. So they really are an extension of our program. So you can call or text 211. And those staff are also bilingual. Um, they do have one staff that is Spanish speaking. So anyone can call and get resources and information from 211. And if people specifically text health or salud, that will get them to the, um, the 211 um, staff person that works most directly with our program. Um, so that's a good thing to know mm -hmm. as well. Any any questions about the scenarios or scenarios that have come up for you that you feel like it would be useful to troubleshoot or any other resources in terms of kind of tips for having these conversations that you think would be helpful?
Just to confirm, that's English Spanish bilingual, correct? Correct. And we do have a question just to go over Cowum really quickly for people who may not be familiar with um, this population. Do you want to? Yeah. So are you wanting to know? I'm not sure what I know, understand what the question is, just like how Cowum eligibility works with our program. Um, yeah. Can you go back to the in the slides? I think that there's a slide a couple and towards the beginning about the RH program. And I think we block out, we talk about Raya or specifically Callum in this. Um, maybe the next one. Yeah, okay, here. So as part of the Reproductive Health Equity Act, one of the things that came down with this legislation is that it expands Callum Plus coverage for 60 days postpartum. So when a woman is pregnant and she enrolls on Callum Plus, she now, after her baby is born, will have 60 days coverage after the birth of the baby. And that is regardless of how the pregnancy ends. So the ending of the pregnancy, she has 60 days. Correct. So if she terminates, Correct. if there's a miscarriage, if it results in a, um, a birth. Correct. Yeah. So this is new, and this came with the expansion of Rhea. And so this is where we're really telling folks, if you're working with someone whose immigration status makes them eligible for Count Plus, this is where you, I would be encouraging my client to like go to the dentist, like go get some of those other appointments that they might not have been able to do during their pregnancy um, in that 60 day postpartum period. Um, this is really huge and is really um, providing extra care for a lot of different people. Um, so the other piece of this, and it's super complicated, but I'll try to give it to you in a nutshell, is CAWM proper. Some of the mechanisms of RAYA are implemented through CAWM. So to keep it as plain and simple for you all, if somebody wanted a vasectomy or tubal ligation, they want to get their tubes tied, and they do not have an eligible immigration status, they could be eligible for those services through the reproductive health program, but this is one of the really tricky parts where they actually have to enroll onto CAWM because the way we pay for that service is through the CAWM mechanism. So if and when you have a client that's wanting to get to that point, it is best that they go to a reproductive health clinic so that they could then be referred to a provider that takes that does the procedure and the clinics then should take care of all the paperwork. So we're really trying to make that stuff not super difficult and challenging for you, but it is one of the more confusing parts of the passage of Raya. Mm -hmm. So if people are on Cowan but not Cowan Plus, they essentially only have emergency benefits and then a, a few reproductive health services through that? Correct. Correct. That is exactly what it means. Thank you. And then also it's important to note that, say, if let's say this woman or man decides to go and get um, a vasectomy or to get a tubal ligation, they are then not eligible for the rest of the reproductive health program after they get those procedures, right? Because the RH program is for people who can get pregnant or get someone else pregnant. So once you get those procedures, you wouldn't then be eligible for any other services. Mm. I know, but we have lots of partners. Call 211, they'll get you into a clinic that can take care of you. Thank you. Here, I'll get us back to where we were. And so before Dolly kind of just wraps up, I just want to say thank you so much for inviting us to have these conversations, um, like reaffirming the important work that you do. And um, and it's just fun for us to be able to be a part of it and to talk a little bit about um, the RH services. Um, we just 
again, really appreciate the work that you're doing out in the community, telling people about our services, giving um, resources. So um, thanks for playing along with our little scenario game. Yes, thank yeah. you very much. Um, and to kind of remind you, we do have some additional materials. Um, there's a brochure and this Pathways to Care. Can you skip to the next slide? And more importantly, um, if you have questions, please contact your ROC, um, and your ROC will then be in touch with us. And so I want to use this as an example. This is a picture of me when I was an assister way back when in Josie. Um, but this, I think, is important. We, I just want to take a moment. I got a call from Deschutes County on Friday, and there were some questions about um, doing some outreach within a school, and there were some concerns that, you know, people weren't that open to reproductive health information. And I want to address that. So you need to know right now that not everyone is down for reproductive health, okay? Not everyone is like, birth control, condoms. Like that is very much what we do here. But as you're out and about in a community, it's really going to be important for you to know your audience. And if you're going to, um, a very conservative school district or a faith-based community or something like that, our program may not be the appropriate program to talk about at that time. And that is okay. And we need you to, um, to kind of think about that because we don't want you to put yourself in a situation where you're uncomfortable, but it's okay that this is not a topic necessarily that everyone's going to care about. Um, we're asking you to, as you're out and about doing the outreach you're already doing when it comes up and it feels right, to share our resources. Um, but we don't want to put any of you in a position that makes you uncomfortable or um, anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that um, I got that question from an assister via a ROC. So please continue to work with your ROCs if you have questions. We have all of these resources available on our website. And then again, you can call or text 211. Um, we have about 15 minutes left, and we are more than happy to answer any and all questions you might have. See, there's one here about how how is the best way to get brochures. Well, um, why don't you email us there, that RH program. And can you include your name of your organization, the address, and how many brochures you would like? That would be the best way for us at the moment to get you brochures. And our brochures are double-sided in English and Spanish. We will be having some... Um, we're having some brochures made that are a little bit more culturally responsive, but some folks wanted images. So we will have some um, imaged brochures soon, um, and they will be available in English and Spanish, Vietnamese and English, um, traditional Chinese, um, simplified Chinese and English, and Korean and English in the next, I would say, month-ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Elena asked about a reproductive health number people can call and speak with someone, and it sounds like that would be 211. Correct. Yeah, or their local clinic. clinic right. Mm -hmm. And I would almost recommend that, like, help them figure out the clinic that's closest to them or that they would want to go to and get them that information, especially if they have really specific questions. If you have questions about... For example, we want to know if you're having problems. Like if you're having a difficult time at any of our clinics or if for some reason your client was told no or something like that, we really want to know. And those are all reasons to reach out to your ROC and then they would be in contact with us. Um, we, this is part of us kind of piloting with you all as assisters is to kind of figure out what's working and what's not. And if there are things not working, we really do need to know. So we're counting on you to um, either email us or contact your ROC is definitely the best option. See, I don't see any other questions, just a lot of thank yous and great information. Thank you all Sweet. so much. 
Um, and thank you all also, all everyone who was muted, but in this, uh, there's was so much good content in the question box. Thank you all so much oh, for man, participating. I, I know. Yay. <laughs> I can I can get you all a copy. Um cool. so yeah, let's see. I'm not seeing anything new pop up. Just a lot oh, a lot more thank yous. Great webinar. Um so thank you so much for sharing this really fantastic information with us. Thank you everyone who uh, participated and tuned in. And I will make sure that this gets uh, up on our, our group site so that we can have this and, and also the, the slide content itself. So you can access that separately so that we continue to be able to use these fantastic resources. Thank you, everyone, and we're going to give you back 14 minutes of your life. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop Thanks. recording now, and uh, everyone have a have a great day. <laughs>